this is Steve Darcy from Go Engineer, and I've had a couple customers ask me about doing some uh, pipe routing in SolidWorks, so I thought I'd show you how it works. Uh, it works for the most part out of your design library, so I have a, a routing library kind of set up, and this is running for the most part straight out of the box. Um, if you just grab a flange from the library and just drag and drop it in, plop it in, it'll ask you for the configuration, and that's it. It just puts it into the assembly. So if this happens, then you forgot to turn your add-in on. So let's go ahead and delete that. Let's go to our add-ins. Turn on routing. And let's do it again. So we'll drag and drop it in. And I'm going to go ahead and place it on the origin. And now I'm going to go ahead and say 6 inch. That's fine. And now you can see the route properties will come up. Okay. Uh, it's going to default to a subassembly uh, nomenclature for that. Uh, here's my pipe, the default pipe size. It's automatically getting 6 inch because I put a 6 inch flange in there. If I want to use weld gaps, this will be a universal thing. So if I wanted to put quarter inch weld gaps, I can do that there. And any standard length. So if I buy this in 20 foot sections and I make something that's 40 foot long, it's going to go ahead and divide it up um, every 20 feet. And then, of course, I'm using a short radius elbow and everything looks good. We'll go ahead and say OK. So what's going to happen is it's going to throw me into a subassembly with a 3D sketch. And as I start to create geometry, you'll start to see more components and stuff come into this. So don't be too frightened of this. For the most part, it's just a 3D sketch. So I'm going to zoom out a little bit. We can go get the line command off of the sketch toolbar. Or if we go to piping, you'll see the same line command. So maybe I want to go up a little bit. We'll go over a little bit. And if I want to go back in space, I hit the tab key. That'll flip it so I can go back in space. That looks good. I'll go ahead and zoom out a little bit. Hit tab one more time. And we'll go ahead and stop there. We can, of course, add dimensions. We can drag these things around. So if I want to just put a smart dimension, make that guy 48, maybe this one 36. You'll see everything starting to turn black. And we'll add one more. Now, depending, depending on what elbow I picked, that's going to depend on what radius it automatically puts in there. Um, I can go in, this is a 3D sketch, and just delete that elbow. And it says, hey, you, you didn't like that. So I can go ahead and add an align if I want. So maybe I'm going to do something a little bit different. Go ahead and come over here. Add that. And maybe I'm going to go grab a T. And just drag and drop a straight T in there. Because of the way the intersection works, it's going to automatically orient itself correctly. And now you can kind of see I get my little pipes back. Okay. I can also just drag a T in. And if it's going in the wrong direction, you'll see it'll automatically try and align itself. You can hit the tab key and that'll flip it. Now, the orientation doesn't matter as much. If you drag it back, you can see it'll automatically flip. I do want it to go in that direction. Uh, if I already have an elbow on there and I delete the pipe, notice it goes back to a straight line. If I go ahead and add these, if I drag them around, it'll automatically add the little elbow in there. It's some pretty smart stuff. And if I exit out of the sketch, you'll notice what happens is SolidWorks automatically slices this guy up, goes ahead and puts T's and elbows in, and it looks pretty good. All right, to get back into the editing of the 3D sketch, you can select on any of the 3D sketches or the subassembly itself, right click and just say edit route. That puts you back into your 3D sketching mode. So I want to create a couple more components or put a couple more components in. Let's go to our valves and I'm just going to drag and drop a gate valve. You'll notice it automatically aligns itself. You can hit the little tab key to flip it. Pick the right schedule. I'm going to go ahead and drag another one. Put this guy over here. Say OK. And we get this little gyro here. If you want to, you could drag it. 
So maybe I want to orient it 45 degrees off. So we can do that. And we'll go ahead and drag one more. And plop him in there. So that looks pretty good. I need some little T's to come up. So we'll go to the T's. And I'm just going to do a straight T. Tab it to flip it up. That looks pretty good. Drag one more. He's going the right direction. And then uh, I'm going to get just the line command. Make sure it's going off back into space. That looks good. And I need to do one more. Put it back in space. Now if these need to be the same height coming back here, um, then it's pretty easy. We select on the two lines and use our relationships. Make them equal. So that way they have the same height. We can use construction geometry. These are supposed to end at the same place. We can just use the line command. Uh, before I hit line, let me go ahead and turn it on for construction. And we'll go ahead and start right there. Uh, go to the endpoint there. Just go into select mode. And then we'll select on both of these. So you can kind of see we can make one longer than the other. And they're moving a little bit too much uh, before I constrain that. Let's go grab a smart dimension. And I want to make this guy 26 tall. And I'll go ahead and constrain him. Looks good. And then I'm going to make this select on that guy. Hold control, select on him. We're going to make that perpendicular. And so now if one drags, then the other drags along with it. So that looks pretty good. All right. I could, of course, finish dimensioning that. Um, I am going to move this guy over just a little bit. Collapse those it. Or maybe I want center to center distances between these two guys. That looks good. And uh, then we need to add some flanges. So even though I have my whole design here, I need to be able to ship this thing. And I can't fit this whole thing on a truck. So I'm going to go back to uh, my flanges. And just grab my uh, slip on weld flange. I need to connect it here. So that looks good. Um, then I need to figure out where I need to uh, get rid of the, the rest of this guy. So I may want to uh, break it up into three segments. So let's go ahead and do that. So there's one. And then if I drag and drop onto the other side, watch the little icon. You'll see it does a little double double flange. So it puts those things together. That looks good. Uh, so this is my first spool. This will be my second spool. And I'll go ahead and weld these guys on. So I'll just add a slip-on flange there. Drag another one. So it's kind of like little Legos. Look for the little double symbol there. Same thing here, drag and drop. All right, and then if I actually want the flange to be part of that guy, then you just right click on the line there and say remove pipe, and it'll go ahead and pop it to that. Now this one's constrained, so when I right click and remove pipe for that one, you'll see the flanges move over for that one. Now if I put the dimension on this guy, then of course he would have stayed put as well. All right, and maybe I do want those to be equal. Uh, yeah, 26 and 26, so that should be good. All right, so pretty good looking design. I'm happy with it. I need uh, two more flanges, put them on the ends of these guys. So easy as dragging and dropping. All right, now I got a pretty good looking uh, spool design. So again, I finish out of the sketch. It's going to go ahead and create uh, a components folder and a route parts folder. So all my individual pieces of pipe are in there. All my individual components, straight T's, elbows, all that stuff is going to be in the components folder. So pretty quickly, I was able to uh, create some stuff, but we're not done yet. We still have to make drawings. That's the most important thing. we got to tell the guys what to do. But one more step right before I do a drawing is I need to tell it how I want to split this guy up. So those are what we call pipe spools. So I'm going to 
Uh, before you go into pipe spools, if you go into your options under routing, we can name what the actual spool name format. Uh, in this case, this is a uh, hot oil. So it's HOH is the name of the assembly. And uh, so I'm gonna right click on that, go ahead and say define spools and notice it says pipe HOH. Uh, we can override that if you want. Maybe I just want it to be HOH01. Okay. Then we select on the pool segments. So when I select on that, notice it automatically puts the two components for uh, the two flanges in there as well. So this is my first pipe spool. I'm gonna go ahead and thumbtack it. So I'm gonna create a couple of these. So we'll say okay. Now it goes to, oops, should have made it HOH-02. All right, uh, this one we can also click on the little blue, change the color if we want. This spool segment is gonna start here. Doesn't know which way it wants to go. So I'm gonna pick on that guy, that guy. Uh, also on the other side of that, so it gets the, uh, if I pick in the spool components there, it'll highlight those, it'll make sure that we get them. If you miss pick, if I pick this guy way over here, uh, should give me a little error if I hit okay. So I don't wanna do that, so I'm gonna clear that. And that looks all good, happy with that. So I'll go ahead and say okay to that. Then I've got HOH-003. Change the color. And these spool segments will start from here. They'll go up and around through this valve and finish out right there. I'll go ahead and select on that take a look at where make sure I got all the uh, the flanges it looks good so I'll say okay at any time if you need to rename these or change them it's just a right click and edit spool and then you can go in there and change them up okay notice when I select on it there's my blue one there's my red one and there's my kind of tannish one all right with that we can finish out of the uh, the sub assembly and I want to make a drawing. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-select that. We have a button on the piping called Pipe Drawing. So select on that. It's going to open up the subassembly in its own window. Uh, then we get to pick what spools I want to do the drawing for. So I'll pick all of those. Uh, what size sheet. In this case, I'll do a C-size landscape. And for the bomb template, I have one called Bomb Piping. And then each individual spool, I want to be on a separate sheet. And we'll say, okay. It's gonna rotate that around, put the little components on there, go ahead and pop in a bill of material for each, each spool. So we can, of course, drag this around. It's done everything. There is a checkbox for the sketch. If you don't want the sketch in there, you can right click and just hide it. If you do want some of the center lines, you can just use the center line command and just pick on the pipes. Put those guys back in. Okay. Um, we can clean up some of the, these are just regular balloons. So we can use magnet lines. So I, mean, I missed, so I'm gonna just drag that. So it makes it pretty easy. And we have a couple sheets. So this is one sheet. Here's the second sheet. So it doesn't take a whole lot of work. Uh, if you wanna shade these, you can. We'll go to the first sheet. And maybe I want an overview of all of those. So I'm gonna go ahead and uh, start up sheet four. Go over here to the browser tree and pick on our uh, piping HOH there. And maybe I just want a little trimetric. Drag and drop it in. Go ahead and shade it. And one to nine, Let's see if one to 10 fits on there. Nope. So we're gonna have to go to a custom scale and let's see if 115 works pretty good. 
All right, so here I might also want to uh, designate the different, uh, so I may call this sheet. Let's call him 00, because he's kind of my assembly. We can drag it, so he's going to be in the front. My sheet 01, this is going to be my, uh, my first spool. So we can do a couple things. Uh, I can put a balloon on there. And before I put a balloon, I'm going to tell it to do a uh, inspection. I kind of like the way that looks. Uh, we're going to do five characters. And the balloon text, notice I have an option here for spool reference. So if I pick on the pipe, place that out there. And I kind of missed on that. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. Select it. Just drag it to the edge. There we go. And it's getting that correct spool name. Now, another thing that you'd probably want to do is take that and save that guy out. So now I have a favorite right there. And when I want to put in a new balloon, I can select that pipe spool. It's going to set that the way I want. And then I can select on this pipe spool and plop it in there. Or this pipe spool and pop it in there. Uh, if it's not going to the right one, there we go. I'm not picking very good today. So there's HO2 and HO3 and HO1. So then you may want to uh, modify your sheet names if you want. Go to properties. And so on and so forth. That way I can look at HO1. That's this guy. And within a couple minutes we can uh, finish cleaning this guy up and we can have our full pipe design fully detailed out. So hopefully this helps you try and get started with SolidWorks routing uh, especially with the piping. This is Steve Darcy. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.